We're back this morning with Senator John Cornyn. Senator Cornyn, thank you very much again for your extra time here to talk Thanks, about Bob. some issues that are very important. We're rapidly approaching the third anniversary of the murder of U.S. Border Patrol agent Brian Terry. Uh, I was one of the first writers to write about his murder, wrote about the day after he was killed, and immediately that whole case just started smelling really bad, that there was a cover-up in progress. I've become uh, good friends now with Brian Terry's family, mm. and his brother and sisters and his mother, and uh, they want answers. They, they really want to, the government, they don't care what the answer is. I mean, if Brian made a mistake, he made a mistake. If, if the government made a mistake, the government made a mistake. But they want the answers and they're not getting them. What can we do? I know you've been pushing real hard on this issue. How do we move this forward? Well, I've uh, called for Eric Holder's resignation because uh, he has completely botched uh, this whole uh, uh, misguided uh, gun running effort into the hands of the cartels and actually covered it up. Uh, as you know, he, he claimed executive privilege over a lot of documents that would tell the fact, truth to the Terry family and others, mm -hmm. and the presidents backed him up, uh, mm -hmm. saying he has complete confidence in Eric Holder. I think he may be the only one in America who's got confidence in Eric Holder. I certainly don't. And uh, I know right now that the claim of executive privilege, the cover-up is being litigated in court. Mm -hmm. And I think ultimately we will know the truth. Unfortunately, uh, this president and this attorney general are getting in the way of that. And you're right, uh, we need to know the facts so that uh, the Obama administration, uh, the attorney general, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms could be held accountable. And so the people who, and the people who lost their loved one, Brian Terry's family, can get some closure and uh, at knowing exactly what the facts are. You know, this judge in Washington, D.C. is a Democrat appointee, and she has delayed making a ruling on this case for quite some time. And then during the government shutdown, she basically came out and said, well, I would have made a ruling by now, but the Republicans shut down the government, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't sound like a doesn't sound unbiased like <laughs> situation there. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we've got to have a, a plan to move, move forward on that. Right. The, uh, well, hopefully, once she does make a decision, if it's a, if it's not the right decision, it can be appealed, mm -hmm. and we can. And that speaks to some other things that the president's trying to do, like pack the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals in D.C. So far, we've been successful in blocking that. But hopefully, there'll be final recourse, and we'll get to see the justices done. Now, I, I understand that one of the senators has actually said that he will put a block on any future judicial nominations that the the president puts forward. Is that an effective strategy in, in moving this issue forward? Well, it, it helps. Uh, it helps. The uh, You can overcome that with uh, 60 votes in the Senate. So mm -hmm. it, it just depends on what the lay of the land is and sometimes it shifts on a daily basis mm -hmm. because there's so many different interests, whether it's legislation or appointments or other issues. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a constantly moving uh, target. Uh, but I do think that we need to continue to use every tool in our toolbox to get the truth out. Mm -hmm. uh, this administration, you know, whether it's it's the misleading the American people about if you like what you have, you can keep it. Whether misleading them saying your premiums are going to go down twenty five hundred dollars for a family of four, just whether you know whether it's Fast and Furious, whether it's Benghazi, it's just been a litany of uh, well, we have to call it what it is, lies. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, the president seems to have gotten away with it. I think now, with the failure of Obamacare, we're seeing his credibility lie in shambles. And uh, its uh, he's not running for re-election again, but mm -hmm. Democrats are in 2014, and they are panicked. They are in a full state of panic, looking for the exit, looking to salvage their chances for re-election. And uh, we need to be smart about how we play this out and not to walk into the trap, not make the issue ourselves, mm -hmm. and keep the focus on the president, his failed experiment in big government, and all of his uh, enablers. In terms of Attorney General Eric Holder, it seems you had a little foresight on this. If I remember right, you were one of the few senators that actually voted against his confirmation as Attorney General. One of the best votes I ever cast is a no vote for, uh, for Eric Holder. Uh, I was worried that he was just a political hack Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't need a political hack as Attorney General. They're supposed to be the chief law enforcement officer of the country. I was uh, Attorney General of Texas, so I have a little bit of, uh, I have some strong opinions about that. Uh, but Eric Holder is just another arm of the political operation in the West Wing of the White House, and that's not, uh, that's not acceptable. I know you have to get on to your next event real quick. One last question. Uh, border security and illegal immigration reform, or 
immigration reform. Right. Uh, where does that stand now? The House is working on it. it is that going to move forward in this session or is it going to go into next year? I think it's going to go into next year and I couldn't vote for the Senate uh, immigration bill because it threw about 40 billion dollars at the border with no plan on how to effectively implement it or integrate our border security measures. I want to see a real solution to, the, to that. Uh, because we've had nothing but promises that have not been kept, mm -hmm. whether it's border security or people coming into the country and then staying mm -hmm. and overstaying their visas. That's about 40% of illegal immigration just there. Uh, and uh, the Senate bill had no effective plan. So uh, we do need to fix our broken immigration system, but I, th I think Republicans ought to be the champions of legal immigration, mm -hmm. not illegal immigration. Our mm -hmm. Democratic friends seem to want to champion illegal immigration and that's the wrong, uh, wrong road to take. And you offered an amendment to the Gang of Eight bill to put some verifiable, measurable um, marks, benchmarks right. in place right. for border security before right. any immigration reform could move forward. Right. The Democrats have knocked that down, which says that they're really not serious about moving this issue forward. That's what I was afraid of. They'd make another promise that wouldn't be kept, and then we would have uh, gone down this road giving them, you know, as part of this bill what things that they wanted when we wouldn't get the most fundamental things like restoring uh, security and law uh, and the rule of law. Uh, my friend Michael McCall over in the House of Representatives mm -hmm. is doing good work as chairman of the Homeland Security Committee. We're working closely with him. So we're not going to ignore this issue. We're going to continue to, to, to focus on it. Uh, hopefully after this election we'll have some more reinforcements that will actually help us uh, make this part of the law. Now that's absolutely critical for us and thank you very much for taking your time this morning to talk to the readers at Texas GOP Vote and we appreciate the access as always. Well thanks for all you do Bob. Thank appreciate you. it.